If we were to assume that we get to a point where we know how we're going to be able to cash flow it to build it and how we're going to be able to cash flow it to operate it, how will we go about soliciting proposals? We've heard from two now, but those are just drafts and they may need tweaked. How will we go about soliciting specific proposals for what we think we want to build and giving everybody a fair crack at, 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 at the project? Well, I think that obviously we'll need to put out some type of notice so that on our website, contact every firm and ask them every firm in town if they're an interest, if they have an interest, if they have a proposal that they'd like to bring forward. As we get down the process here and the task force decides uh, where they're kind of going in, in June or they have a presentation, it, I can't help it, I'm not responsible for this, but that's when the public will become engaged. Mm -hmm. They're not engaged right now other than talking at the coffee clutch and stuff and uh, getting their opinions formulated. And as it gets closer to what could eventually be a reality, the citizens are gonna, gonna have something to say about it individually or in groups to council members and the mayor. It could be an election. This could be a referendum. So then my question would be, how do we handle that? How do we tell the firms that we might seek RFPs from or design or, or what we're voting on to invest that kind of time and money when we don't even know what the outcome is. Uh, even the most staunch supporter of the program up at this table could, could, could cave to the, uh, that we're shoving it down their throats and say, okay, have, let's have an, the library had an election, let's have an election for this. Or, was each engineering firm was pre-qualified as to whether they could do a certain type of uh, work. Uh, if they could do water work, they would be, their name would go down the list. And we would go through the process and determine what they were qualified, what they had experts that they could do. For example, they were a bridge engineer, then they didn't do bridges, they were on the list to do bridges. And so they created a list in West Des Moines of people that were pre-qualified. If a project was decided upon by the city that they wanted to do a bridge, for example. They'd go to the list and they'd look at see who was top of the list based on previous projects. And you would get a certain, I don't know how they did it, like a point system based on the cost of the project. If you had done the most recent project, you were gonna have a high number of points and so you would go to the bottom of the list and the next guy would be up. And already everybody's already pre-qualified, rates would be known, mm -hmm. so they wouldn't have a chance, you know, they would charging a fair rate for their work so that would already be decided and they'd be pre-qualified. We would say you're qualified to do this job and we agree that and then you're top of the list you get the project. So then they would get the project, a number wouldn't be now established because they got the next project and then depending on where they were uh, with those new points they may still be top of the list because somebody else may have got a six million dollar project the year before. Mm -hmm. They still stay top and they get the next two projects until they get to that next number. <coughs> And they went through that. Well, list. see, typically right now we don't do a good deal of process with regards to our architectural and engineering bidding. We right now do RFPs, so they make their proposal as to whether they're the best to do the job, and then the staff makes the determination as to whether they're the best for the job, and then chooses them, and then the negotiation process occurs between staff and the firm to determine what price they will be. We should take X dollars and give this guy this many, this many, this many, take turns and go through the revolve. I'm not ready to do that. You know, we don't have to go to a lot of extra work. So I, I think it might be a bold. Basically, for lack of a better term, there are separate checkbooks within the larger checkbook of the city. And so these different areas function on their own with inside of the big umbrella of the city. Okay, what are the 28 funds? Well, general fund, general capital improvements. Right. I mean, yeah. The, the Fund accounting is basically you need to identify areas that the state code says this is how you're going to spend your money. For instance, road use tax is one fund. There are 50 different bank accounts on that sheet. Okay. Those 50 are combined into 28. So uh, I know there's 50 accounts on there and they're kept that way so we can identify the monies that come in from a legal standpoint 
the revenues go into that particular bank area and the expenditures come out of that particular bank area so monies aren't commingled. For instance, a general fund consists of general, park and rec, library, airport, <coughs> museum, cemetery. All of those are identified separately from the standpoint of budgeting. They're all combined from the standpoint of the annual report. If you read the annual report and you see the number that I give you, which is somewhere around five and a half million dollars of reserves, if you actually read the annual report, I'm surprised nobody's ever talked to me about it, the general fund reserves are eight million dollars and nobody's ever questioned me on that. It's because all of those other funds are tied in with general. When I speak general, and I've talked with this and the mayor in the past, we kind of have a general, a big general, and a little general. The big general includes all of the funds. The little general is the count that I give you guys when we talk budgeting. So although there are 50 bank accounts there, there are only 28 identified funds within the annual report. I want to terminate the relationship with our other 2080 partner, which is the Chamber of Commerce. I want to cut the middleman out. I think what we need to do is, is restructure this for efficiency and effectiveness and say, you know what, we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to do it with the Visit Mason City Board and their director. We don't need to have a middleman there. From what I understand, checks are payable twice a year to the chamber, who then gives it to the Convention and Visitors Bureau. So I've talked to three other council members who are pretty supportive. Um, I figure that's what this meeting's about. I'm going to be putting on the agenda next Tuesday to uh, vote it up or down to make our new 28E agreement with the uh, visit Mason City. We're going to ask that we give them a year's notice next Tuesday and look for a positive vote and work with the two employees to make sure the transition is smooth and, and they keep doing their job. Uh, I have some other issues that we could talk about at the council meeting about, well, is there a fee the chamber charges for doing this, for handling their money, or there, are there, you know, that would, if that's true, then that would just be more money for the convention and visit Mason City to sell our area more. So it's lean and efficient. I'm just simply <laughs> taking what I consider to be a middleman out. It's not Max Weaver. I've also had this from a council member that Max Weaver's attacking people, and that's just not true at all. Um, uh, actually, I've called the council members, and I, I uh, wouldn't have put it on here today if I didn't have a pretty good thumbs up from the majority. Is it possible for us to execute an agreement directly with the CVB? Uh, I don't have a contract right in front of me. Um, I think with the proper notice, that's that could. Happen. I mean, I don't understand where the middleman is. I aren't those the, the check is written out to the Mason City Convention and Visitors Bureau on a quarterly basis, based on the fact that we get hotel motel tax on a quarterly basis. Um, Sue Armour comes over and picks it up. On, on occasion, we do mail it on occasion. When we mail it, it goes over to the chamber's office. Um, they're not required to come over and provide me reports. Brent, and I, and, and I believe Tom was in a meeting with us, with uh, the chamber and, and Sue, and uh, I guess Sue is now giving you guys quarterly reports or, or semi-annual reports at the meetings, and we, we had a discussion on that. Uh, that's There really isn't any requirement for the reporting. but. I do hand, will hand them the checks or they do go in the mail over to the chamber's office. It's not clear to me why we would put something on the agenda if it's not being requested by either of the two organizations. Yeah, you don't want me to call and talk to you, so I, you'll never know that answer either from this guy, but that's okay. okay. All right. That's in that, that's in that category. If, if I could have a phone conversation with you that didn't last less than two hours, I'd be willing to talk with you, but I got a life. Right. Well, listen, I feel the same way about the two hours worth of emails. Back and forth while I'm driving. Try not to have personal attacks here. Ms. Thank you. Appreciate well, that. Well, and I'm the council is on here, um, and I knew nothing about this until right now. I'll just address, you know, I had a conversation with the chair, and I simply told her uh, that we had a... Uh, significant population uh, decrease, our median age had gone up significantly, and I was always looking for opportunities uh, um, in general for all boards and commissions. If I have the opportunity to grab young talent, um, I'm going to do it. Now, having said that, I haven't had the opportunity to do that, um, as has been pointed out by 
Mr. Nelson, my, most of my appointments are uh, not of that nature. And I've also made it clear in the memo that I wrote to council members today that uh, that, that board and the planning and zoning, uh, uh, ZBA, excuse me, those are quasi-judicial boards. They require a higher standard uh, of judgment and temperament. So, uh, and I stand by my statements with the uh, uh, memo I wrote today. So you're more than welcome. Thank to you. Visit and then uh, go ahead. Yeah, actually, your statement was uh, reported, and uh, you didn't deny it. Was that uh, you said you wanted younger people with fresher thoughts and minds? Uh, quite frankly, since you brought up other boards and commissions, you were also, today I received phone calls from two people that you, uh, in their presence, have told them that uh, there's several people applying for the Environmental Stewardship uh, Committee, but because there's too many women on it, you said that you wouldn't appoint any of those uh, inter interested citizens because... Council Member Isak is not on this agenda. No, 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 either was Planning and Zoning or ZBA. You brought it up. You brought up those peripheral... Uh, in your conversation. Giving and exactly. you said you don't want any more women. You want a man on there. So. There's some issues going on. My, my point would be here. Hey, my, yes, Mayor. I've never said that. Yes, you have. I got, man, oh man, oh man. We'll start all over with that tomorrow then. Yeah. So anyway, leaving that aside, uh, it's real simple. Just because you repeat Council, Council members, Council, please, Mayor, you, I'm, I'm Mayor, please, Mayor, you have plenty of opportunity. Council, just you because you repeat things over and over again doesn't make it true. It just simply doesn't. Mayor, and I understand Mayor. that you, you were talking about filing a complaint. And I don't know, the city, admin, the city attorney want to talk about this at all? The city attorney, Mr. Mayor, only talks about legal issues. He doesn't speculate on opinions and feelings in the community. Well, you're talking about a As a council there, member, so. if you'd let me finish, Mayor, that, <laughs> I can see why two other council members aren't here, Mayor, because they, they know how you deal with you. The reason we're talking about this today is... observation. The reason we're dealing about this today is, is because your inability to apologize to the communities and the elders. Quite frankly, this council member, along with other council members and other people in the community, are talking about it. They were offended. They were taken back by your comments. Whether you broke the law <laughs> is not my call. I never accused you of breaking the law. I said at one time it's parallel to what I said about a person where I apologized and was called on the carpet with a complaint filed. So there could be a reason why nobody over 40 is filling the coffers of wanting to uh, uh, work on these boards and commissions because of that statement. I think that statement needs an apology and it needs a clarification of what you really meant in a broad perspective. Now, if you do that with a press release, I don't care. If you do that with the Globe Gazette, I don't care. If you do that at a council meeting, I don't care. But you need to apologize. It's real simple. For so, the, and let me get this clear, Councilman. Are you suggesting that I apologize for something I didn't say? Because that's what it sounds like you're suggesting. Well, are, you, right, saying, are you saying right, your comments right, to Kathy Lockley were not true or accurate? I put it exactly in the memo and I just said I don't know what memo you're talking about. Read your emails. Okay. Well, if I had two hours a day to read my emails and sit in front of the computer, I would. Well, quit talking on the phone to everybody. Else. Well, you know what? That's what the majority of Mesa City uses still is the phone, Eric, because we have an elderly population that don't have computers. So when a responsive council member does his job, guess how he does it? He does it with the computer. He doesn't tell the elderly population, get a computer and I'll respond to you through email because I don't like talking to you on the phone. So you got an issue here. All I'm saying is you need to apologize, Mayor. Simple to the community. That's one would, it. One would have to actually. Have okay, said I'm done with that. I'm done with number. Th thank you, Councilman. Uh, I appreciate you know, your today. I, I appreciate your. You know, Councilman, I just would say that if every time you said something, we put it on the agenda to discuss it, our agendas would be about three hours long. So I, I would hope that you would just calm down just a little bit. We'll move Mayor, on to the next agenda. I love you, buddy. I know you. We support uh, Mayor Bang and uh, whatever knowledge base that he has for doing the job over the next whatever it is, six months, would be... Yeah, I, would I, just, I just want to clarify what, what you're characterizing as some, my supporter, Roger. I have called Roger at your request, and I told Roger that if that was a position he was interested in, I supported that, and I thought he could do a great job. Yeah. However, that supporter, Roger, is in no way... Um, intended to put any kind of pressure whatsoever on the EDC board. I too talked to Roger. He uh, told me he was interested in the position, and I told him I'd support him as I a candidate. I just want to say that I think my phone must be disconnected because nobody's calling me and talking to me about anything, but that's really okay. Uh, and by the way, if I continue to get beat up here and words put in my mouth, maybe these communication sessions aren't that good or healthy. 
So I'm just putting stuff out. I'm thinking out loud for you. You think that would be a favor to you with all your big complaints? So uh, about my style. So anyway, the Human Resource Department. I'm going to recommend under lean and efficiency again. This is another one. It was actually brought up last year in an email I have from uh, Travis Hickey to separate the human resources from the city attorney's job, the two. I believe I had a conversation with Ms. Solberg back in February of 2010 about doing that also, and I know it was lightly discussed uh, during the budget session. So I'm going to bring it up again in the effort of creating uh, uh, efficiency and effectiveness. And what I mean by that is, is uh, there's been a lot of things that have happened. And also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not sure how do I talk about uh, the position without being uh, called on the carpet for uh, doing something wrong. Uh, this is this 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 position is shared with another position. I don't think it's efficient or effective. Uh, I think the cost savings would be better to employ a city attorney on on its own merit and a human resource on its own merit. I think the conflict that we had in January and February of 2010 explains a lot that, that we had an internal problem with a council member and staff and that the slash city attorney and human resource person had to uh, avoid the discussion of appearance of conflict and we had to hire outside legal. The other thing is, is the list that was given to us here about the uh, human resources position that's in, included in this packet. The second page it never dawned on me, but I read the second page with uh, with am amusement. Um, the list of things, and I, I don't. I guess it was on the back cover, but maybe it didn't get copied. It's a full list of the duties of human resource. It's in the old memo, right? It's a page and a half long. It just struck me as being, wow, how can one person do all this? A full-time city attorney and a full-time human resource person without the assistant at all. I think there'll be a cost savings. By the way, Brent, I asked you for figures today. Do you have them, what we were paying? I left your message on your phone. Nah, well, you know, I didn't get that message. Um, I got my phone right here. When did you leave that message? Today at 4 o'clock? I always listen to your phone and not your Yeah, I have it right here if you want to If you want to get into my phone and listen to my messages. You. you know, I have my phone right here if anybody wants to listen to it. I, I didn't see that message on there. That's okay. what was a Oh, 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 oh,